Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning Radio. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. I live just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia in Canada and I hope that you are having some lovely weather wherever you are. We are having unseasonably cold weather right now which is really weird for us. It's like minus three outside. We've already had snow. It's totally weird. Um, so we've been wrapped up in our woolens and uh, I've pulled out our parkas already and we've been wearing toques and it's really um, weird for this time of year. I'm podcasting on November 7th, 2017, and um, yeah, it's it's been it's been weird. It's been a weird week. Um, I have a few housekeeping announcements to make, and we had a question from the Ask Anything thread on Ravelry, and I forgot to grab it, and I forgot to bring it, so we will do that next, um, next episode on the um, live stream. Um, and you guys will be able to pitch in and throw in your ideas and suggestions around what you think um, of the question and, and what you would do and your advice, which is always awesome to hear. And um, I have just a couple of announcements to make for the Ravelry group and for the Patreon. If you are a new vi new viewer or if you're returning, thank you so much for continuing to stick with the show. And for those who are um, patrons of the show, thank you especially to you guys who keep the lights on here week after week and keep me um, busy and active creating content for you guys and um, hopefully being a, a little voice on your shoulder helping you learn all those techniques and spinning that you really wanna learn. Um, we do a monthly draw from the Patreon subscribers for a calendar that I send out. I actually don't have one right here to show you, but if you've seen past episodes, you know what it looks like. And actually, Kylan was the one who won uh, this month, and uh, that is going to Houston, Texas. I already have your address, Kylan, so um, it will just pop in the, in the mail, and um, congratulations to you. I really wanted to talk briefly about the color and breed studies that are going on in the Ravelry group and on the Slack channel. This was something that I announced on Sunday and we had already started back in October, so I have mentioned it quite a few times. Through October, our only goal and the only thing that we were working on towards our breed and color studies was to generate photos so that our dire in residence, if you will, Katrina of Crafty Jack's Boutique, um, would have a whole slew and a whole portfolio of photos to choose from and she would be able to pick some photos that she liked and create some colorways. This my, this sort of session of breed and color studies is a little bit different from what we've done in the past. The reason for that is that we really wanted to explore combo spinning, combination drafting, um, any sort of way of combining these three colorways in a way that was pleasing and pleasant to the spinner um, and would A, create a new colorway, B, push your comfort zone and push you out of uh, what you would normally spin and also um, give you an opportunity to see what all these different colorways can look like individually and then what they look like all combined together and spun as one colorway, as if there were, as if they came all in one braid. So I thought I would show you the braids that uh, Katrina did for us and um, the photos that she used as inspiration are up on the blog, wellforpearls.com. So I really encourage you to head on over there and have a look at what the photos look like. Um, I will try and put them in to the Ravelry or into the um, into the stream of photos that I do at the in the introduction. And if not, uh, please go and check out the um, blog. So, in no particular order, I thought I would show you this one first. All of these are on the fin base, our breed study for this session, and this goes all the way until March of 2018, um, is fin. So this was um, Fractured Sunrise, I think, Fractured Dawn, Fractured Dawn. Um, and this was inspired by a photo that Britta, um, who is from Sweden and part of our Patreon community, had um, shown us. I love this colorway because I really love the white and the creams in it and um, how it breaks up the green and the purple. I think it's gonna be a very, very interesting braid spun just on its own and it's gonna be even more interesting combi combined with the other ones. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is called Arctic Berries and this was uh, uploaded by our friend Rebecca who is Rebby J. Nice dark rich plums, dark rich hunter green, gorgeous navies. Um, this again is gonna be an absolute gorgeous um, colorway just spun up by itself, but it'll be really amazing in the combo spin as well. 
What I really, really want to see in this one, if I was to spin it by itself, I'm not going to, I'm going to spin it with the other three, or sorry, with the other two um, and combine the three, but um, I would love to see this one on a fiber base that has a bit of sheen to it, like um, like a uh, with a bamboo blend or with a nylon blend or a silk blend, um, and then spun into socks. I think this colorway would be incredible. Uh, this one's called Arctic Berries, and it was uh, Rebecca's photo, actually, that she posted was um, of the uh, um, fall. Uh, the bear, She had stumbled across some Arctic Berries, um, and she lives up in Ehaluit in um, Nunavut, um, which is in northern Canada in the Arctic Circle. So that was really cool to see uh, Katrina choose one of Rebecca's photos. And the last one is called Lakeside. This is my personal favorite, and it's only because I just absolutely love it. I think it's gorgeous. I also was the one that posted this particular photo. So this was a photo of a CN Rail train, and if anybody knows what the Canadian trains look like who are run by Canadian National Railway, um, they're this rusty, really rich red, um, just like our flag. And it was a photo that I captured as we drew, drove past the train because it was traveling incredibly slowly. So I only got a little bit of the engine, but we were up in the Rocky Mountains in the Canadian Rockies up north, and it was just like this incredible uh, view of one of the glacier lakes up there with this lime green um, in the uh, distance and up forward of the lichen and everything that was reflecting off the water. And then this rich, rich mineral dense water of the lake that's this tealy bluey green. So this and the blue sky and then of course the red train. So this was called Lakeside and actually I have to admit I'm I'm going to um order another braid from Katrina in this um colorway, not this base probably. I don't I, I need something that's machine washable. James has already because it's the train colorway, quote unquote, he's already requested a toque. So I told him absolutely and uh, I just need to get it from Katrina when she has a chance to dye it up for me in all of her spare time. So if you're a Patreon member of the um, community, you will have received your um, d Patreon discount code for the Color and Breed Studies um, to use in, in Katrina's shop. You need to check Patreon if you missed that post. It was uh, the Color and Breed Study post. And for everybody else, if you would like to participate, please feel free to participate. Um, the listing is up in, in Katrina's Etsy shop, um, Crafty Jack's Boutique. And there's a, um, a blog post on the blog. There's um, information in the Ravelry group. There's information on Patreon. You just have to uh, go and seek it out. If you would like to participate and spin up some fin of your own and participate in the breed study with us, that's wonderful. If you would like to do your own combination spin and explore colorways, please come on over and join us. It's open. Um, it's just really nice to see everybody working on the same thing so that we can compare and contrast what we chose to do with our with our fiber. But everybody is welcome. Please don't think that you're not able to participate just because you maybe can't or don't want to buy the fiber at this time. I think that's everything for housekeeping. The only last um, announcement that I need to make is that the latest episode of Wool and Spinning Radio for Patreon subscribers is out. It is a conversation between me, Katrina, and our friend Becca over on the other side of the pond in um, Glasgow in Scotland. We had a lot of laughs. We had a lot of fun recording, and I hope that you will check it out because it was probably one of the funniest episodes to date. Um, so let's get on with the show.
is something that I've been needing to get done for quite a few days. And I also really needed to record the podcast. So I thought, well, since you guys always have to watch me talk and talk about my projects and whatnot, I thought today I would actually just walk you through um, actually physically working on something and actually physically trying to get something done. Because uh, this is sort of something that's been on my to-do list for a while and uh, I would really like to get it done. So what better way to get it done than to uh, bring you with me? Um, I am working with my Magicraft Susie right now. And I am actually just um, making some adjustments so that I can wind my bobbins. Um, this is the Sweet Georgia Amethyst that I have been working on. Um, I have been working on this spin for a super long time and this is what the uh, fiber looks like. Let's see if you guys can see that there. Um, I still have some left over, but this is actually um, some stuff that I had bought. So I had bought two braids of it um, off of the discount uh, wall at Sweet Georgia, Superwash BFL. I've talked about it on the show quite a bit and um, I've been working on it for quite a long time and spinning it and I've got, I've got my bobbin finished here. So you can see it back here. Um, sorry for all the mess in the background. I The office, uh, despite my best intentions, just doesn't stay that clean. I um, So the idea here for me is that I basically just really need to get this stuff off of my bobbin on my wheel and onto my weaving bobbins so that I can put them on my Lazy Kate and get these plied, get these singles plied because honest to goodness, I just have not had time to do that. And I finished the singles this earlier this week and I'm kind of at the point where I'm like getting annoyed that I can't get it done because I have all these other projects that I wanna work on. And there just comes a point where you're like wanting to get stuff done. This is really squeaky today. So I spun these singles with the intention of making a three ply sock yarn. That is still my intention. Um, I made these singles really, really, really high twist and I spun on 14 to one on my Magicraft Susie. I have a Magicraft Susie Pro. Um, I've talked about it on the show before. I, I haven't had it for very long. Um, it took me a really long time to find one second hand. And this was part of my, this particular spin was part of my spin the bin that I've been working on this year. And one of the reasons why I really, really wanted to include this particular fiber in my spin the bin is because I had originally bought it for blending and carding and uh, I just never could bring myself to blend it up and to include it in everything that I was carding up and blending um, on my drum carter and I think a lot of it is because I'm sorry for all the squeaking holy smokes this thing is squeaky um, and I think a lot of it is just because I love these colors so much and every time I pulled this particular braid out, Nora would say, oh, I love those colors, mommy. I love that purple and I love that magenta, which is great, but it made me keep putting it aside. And I have two braids of it because I got it off of the sec seconds wall at Sweet Georgia. So they have a bin of fiber um, at Sweet Georgia that sort of, it's been dyed and something went wrong, like the colors separated or they didn't take or the braid broke or it's not a complete four ounce braid or um, well, there's lots of reasons that they um, put put stuff in the second spin. But what I really enjoy about it is you can get uh, really great fiber if you're willing, especially if the braid is broken um, because it's still the same as buying a four ounce braid off of the wall that's perfect except that 
um, in that case, it's just broken. So if you don't care, um, I personally really like it because um, I can still get the colors that I want. And granted, sometimes the colors that I want to spin or I want to blend aren't there, but that's okay. Um, you can work with it. Now I'm looking for, as I'm winding these bobbins, I have three si sets of, I have three singles on this big bobbin on the, on the Susie. So I have to be ever vigilant for the breaker. And I'll show you what that is in a minute. And if you've seen one of my other teaching content videos that showed how I wind all these singles, you'll know what I'm looking for. But I actually spin in some fiber that's different from the base fiber to separate the singles so that I know when I need to uh, stop. Man, I have a lot of singles here. I'm surprised. I hope I didn't miss the break. So these weaving bobbins are from Ashford. And, um, you know, to be honest with you, I actually um, prefer my Leclerc bobbins for this. They're bigger. Um, and they do still fit on my Ashford bobbin winder here. Um, and I really like them and I'll show it to you in just a sec because it's right over there and I can grab it and show it to you. I hope I didn't miss the fiber break because I think I'm thinking that I did. I was talking away and I think it went sailing past me. One of the things I really like about my Magic Craft Susie is the bobbins are really super big. So I find it really, um, it, it saves a lot of bobbins. Oh, there it is. I, it saves a lot of bobbin switching um, to be able to spin, especially for a three ply, to be able to spin all of my singles to one, um, to one yarn. So this is um, some white fiber that I had uh, just laying around that was um, just junk. And I spun it after, so this is um, a third of the braid here. And I spun this little length of fiber um, so that I would know where I need to start my next bobbin, my next weaving bobbin. So this, that was the first singles. And then this is the second singles. Um, one of the things I really, really liked about spinning this fiber, um, I really like BFL. I, I prefer normal BFL. I, I, I don't love superwash BFL. But one of the things I really enjoyed about this spin was the uh, sheen of the fiber. Um, I really enjoyed the, the different shades of purple and the magenta coming through. And Nora um, was around a lot when I was spinning this. And I think she really liked it as well. Um, she kept telling me how much she liked the different colors of purple on the bobbin. And it actually made the bobbin look really pretty. The bobbin was... Uh, as I was spinning and you have all these different colors of purple. I mean, you can see it behind me a little bit. I mean, it's so, so pretty. So this is going to be a three ply fractal. Um, that last set of singles that we just took off, um, this one here, uh, was the, the braid was only divided, the, the, the third of the fiber of the, of the 100 gram uh, um, braid. I only split it five times, I think, or four times. I feel like it was five. And I spun it uh, end to end. I stripped it down five times. When I say when I say divided, I mean that I stripped it. Just lengthwise, the length of the that section of the braid that I had. For this spin, I took the braid, I laid it out, and I split it horizontally. And then I stripped each section because I wasn't too concerned about the colors matching up. I mean, this is a semi-solid. It's not um, going to make a whole lot of difference. The fractal is going to look very similar to what a three-ply, a traditional three-ply would have looked like. But I really, really liked um, the idea of this one having these really long color repeats going through the whole length of the yarn. And I'm really hoping that when I knit these socks that that'll get picked up in the sock itself, that you'll be able to see that. 
I don't know if it'll work out. I have no idea. I have to knit them. But that is one thing about spinning a fractal with a semi-solid is you get these long repeats of these of, of these colors. Because like, look at how long this purple's been going for. And it's only very, very slowly transitioning to the magenta now. I mean, it's so pretty. So I'm going to go off and finish this. And then I'll have my three weaving bobbins to show you. And then basically what I do is I put these on my Lazy Kate and I ply them. So one of the reasons why I, I forgot to mention, so one of the reasons why I really like putting my singles onto weaving bobbins after I have spun for a, particularly a three ply, that it's really only my three plies. And if I were to do them four ply that I do this for, and the reason is because um, you're taking the singles off of the bobbin down there, off of the side, and you're adding those singles onto their side, onto the weaving bobbin. So you're not adding or removing any twist, or and if you are, it's very, very minimal. And um, I really like the singles that I get from doing this. Um, it's almost like the twist kind of evens out a little bit, and um, it makes the the uh, fiber, or sorry, when I go to ply it, it, it makes it just a very even um, singles to, to ply. So this was the other interim fiber that I put in there, and it's super, super coarse, and it's got a whole bunch of kemp in it, so I knew that I would, that I would feel it. And sure enough, I did. I felt it go through my hand. I think I wound this one quite a bit tighter. I could feel myself holding on to it quite a bit, quite a bit more tightly. And then here's our last one. And then I'm done. My back's starting to hurt, standing in this funny position. I worked out this morning. I had a my favorite class of the week is on is on uh, Tuesday mornings, and it's at 5:15 in the morning. Which some of you are like, "Oh my gosh, it's crazy!" But I um they I just absolutely love the instructor, and she's um a real powerhouse, and she's very very gentle. Her personality is very very gentle, and she's um incredibly strong physically. Um, she's just just awesome, and I, I find I'm really learning a lot from her about um you know when to push myself and how much and when to hold back a little bit and to save it and uh, she's so positive and so um, welcoming that it makes you want to go and she uh, she teaches a lot of classes at the gym but in the mornings um, you feel like you've got her it's almost like a semi-private because there's only like five of us in the class and uh, she gives us all sorts of gems of knowledge and things to keep in mind about our physical fitness and nutrition and how much we're moving and what kind of movements those are and she's just really awesome she used to be a power lifter so you can imagine the type of muscle that she's got although she says she's a lot smaller than she used to be because she's lost a lot of her muscle muscle mass from um, not lifting as a power lifter anymore but it's so worth it to get up in the morning because she teaches uh, three days a week in the morning and I go to every single one of her classes and I get up at 5.15 and you know the first week, the first week and a half it was really really hard and I found by like three o'clock in the afternoon I was really crashing and it was almost like something like after two weeks it was almost like something like I don't know kind of flipped or a switch went on or I'm not really sure. Um, all of a sudden it wasn't hard anymore and it was really easy and I looked forward to getting up and now often I'm awake at 4.30 when I don't have to be awake until 4.45 but I'm actually waking up at like 4.30 ready to get up and out of bed which is pretty incredible because I wouldn't have said that a couple of months ago. Holy smokes, let me tell you. I was really coveting my sleep back in the summer and really uh, feeling like I needed more sleep and that I wasn't getting enough sleep. And I've always been an early to bed kind of a person. But now with getting up so early, um, I'm often in bed by 9 or 9.30. At the absolute latest, I'm going to sleep at 9.30. Other than when I'm working nights. And I've really noticed a huge difference in my energy levels and my outlook and my positivity. 
if you're on the fence about starting to get up in the morning to go work out give yourself at least two to three weeks to make a decision as to whether it's the right thing to do or not and just make yourself stick with it because uh man it's been the best thing best thing and you know i'd heard it from others there's a we uh, are we live next door to an rcmp officer who um he trains at quite a high level and for because of the type of, of police work that he does and he gets up every morning except for sundays at 4 30 in the morning and i see him out there and he's a big advocate of getting up early 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 and uh working out and he uh i can totally see what he means now because i've really noticed a huge difference in my own physical fitness in a very short period of time all right so that's it i'm all done um i'm gonna put these on my lazy kate and i'm gonna get them plied and uh, hopefully by the time we live stream in a couple of weeks um, I will have some gorgeous purple yarn to uh, share with you and I hope that um, um, I'll be able to post it on Instagram before then that's my hope so uh, stay tuned over the next couple of days So I usually spend um, most of my time on the podcast talking about sweaters that I make that are not out of that are out of hand spun, not out of commercial yarn. But because I royally messed this one up, I thought that I would share it with you on the podcast because I did talk about it last time in the live stream, and I shared it alongside some other stuff that I had been working on. And I thought a um, a really cool way to follow that up was to show you um, the finished object. So this is the Veronica sweater by um, Shannon Cook. Um, Shannon lives locally to me. She's um, just over on the island, on Vancouver Island here in British Columbia. She's about um, three hours away via ferry. And um, this was something that as soon as she published the pattern, I really wanted to make it. Um, and I talked to you about it last time. So I showed you the finished sweater last time. You'll remember uh, me making fun of myself because I literally omitted 10 inches of knitting through the back. So I misread the pattern. Um, I thought that it said one measurement and it actually said another one. So when I got to um, what I thought was the finished measurement, I started to decrease the collar and started to shape for the front. And I had cast off these stitches here at the back that you cast off as and then you uh, finish up with your left front. So the sweater is an interesting construction. Um, it's actually, knit by starting at the lower right hand side knitting up and then you cast stitches on and you knit across the back all the while you are shaping the collar at the same time so this is all knit at the same time and then uh, you get to uh, the measurement at the back for your size do a couple of um, shawl, shawl collar decreases uh, bind off a bunch of stitches and then you're going to knit down the front so to finish the left front so it's a really interesting knit um, I knit mine all on five millimeter needles I did not do a gauge swatch beforehand because I had knit with this yarn before and I knew what my gauge would be um, what I, I used uh, West Yorkshire spinners uh, Aaron it's more like a worsted weight, and I would even say it's more like a light worsted. Um, it's very, very similar to Cascade 220, um, although I think that it's more tightly spun, and I prefer the feel of the yarn um, compared to Cascade 220. I think that this yarn is machine washable, but I can't remember, um, and I don't have a ball band with me right here, so I can't check, uh, but I will look, and I'll pop it in the notes down below here so you'll probably be reading that while I um, try to remember. I finished this yesterday. I haven't actually woven in any of my ends yet so all the way through the sweater I do have ends to weave in. I used, I think I used five balls of yarn, I think, and the last ball of yarn that I used I may have dipped into the sixth ball of yarn or I may have dipped into the fifth, I can't quite remember. Um, I only use that last bit of yarn uh, for the lower ribbing at the back. So after all is said and done, before you seam under the arms here, um, you pick up and knit the ribbing at the back and then you cast off, seam together, and you've got your finished sweater. I didn't make any modifications other than adding a seam stitch on either side of all of the ribbing. So instead of 
however many stitches it told you to cast on, I added one stitch. So either side, my left and my right front had an extra stitch and my ribbing at the back down here, instead of knit one purl one to begin and end, I actually had knit two and then the one by one ribbing and then at the end I had knit two. And that just gave me a seam stitch on either side so that you had a really, really nice seam under the arm there. Um, in terms of fit, it's a really interesting shape. Um, I am an hourglass. Uh, a lot of people think that I am a pear. I am a pear, um, but when you actually do my measurements and when I actually sit down and look at the numbers, my shoulder width is actually the same as my hip width, which makes me an hourglass. And my waist is um, quite a bit smaller than my um, hips. So full disclosure, my hips are 41 inches around at the uh, fullest place. And up here around my shoulders is actually 40 inches. Um, and my waist is actually only 29, depending on the day, 30, 31 inches. So there's a 10 inch gap between my waist and my hips, which makes sense um, because I am an hourglass. So, um, and when I, before I had kids, I was about a 28 inch waist and I have always been a 40 to 42 through my hips for as long as I can remember. The reason why I'm telling you all of this is because um, this particular sweater shape, uh, when I was at, when I was about halfway through knitting it the first time, I was really questioning whether I had made the right decision about making a sweater like this um, because I have such a full bum um, and my this whole area on the dress form it looks like it it falls really nicely. When you put it on me, um, it pulls up and under. So it kind of pulls up like this and it wants to hang like this on, on the back of me. Um, I'm not sure if that will be fixed with blocking, if it'll make it just that little bit bigger, that little bit drapier that it'll fit me a little bit nicer. Um, right now, I'm not sure that I can see myself wearing this because of my shape. Um, unless the front comes down quite a bit and relaxes quite a bit, um, I'm, it's just not a great shape for me. It, it, it feels very boxy on me. The funny thing is, and I'll show it to you right now, when I'm wearing a big shawl like this, this is the East Gen shawl by uh, Stephen West. It's knit in Barocco Ultra Alpaca. It's not hand spun. I've never talked about it on the show. Um, when I put this on myself, wearing a big shawl like what I'm wearing, it's actually kind of okay. <laughs> and I think that's because it sits about five inches back from where it's supposed to sit. Um, but you can see how at the back, it just doesn't fit properly. Um, and my arms, as soon as they pull forward, um, the whole thing starts to pull up and ride up. And I can feel it when I'm wearing it. Like I can feel that it's not in the right spot. Um, and I can feel that it's not, that it's not a great fit on me. Um, and again, I think it's just my shape. If my hips were quite a bit smaller, it would just fall fall straight. Um, but because I'm curvy, and I have no intention of not ever being curvy, uh, because that's just my body shape and it's just the way that I am, um, I'm not totally sure that this is really gonna be a great sweater for me. Maybe it'll block out. I haven't washed it yet. I haven't woven in the ends yet. Part of me wants to wash and block it before I do that, only because um, I don't wanna go to all the trouble of weaving in all the ends to rip it all out. So um, I've already done that once because I made that mistake um, with the knitting. And yeah, I'm just not sure what I'm gonna do about this one. I don't really wanna wash it right now either because um, it's super, super cold right now. It's minus three outside at the moment, which is really unseasonably cold for us. Um, we don't usually see temperatures quite this cold at this time of year. And I'm not sure if it's gonna warm up in the next month or so. So I'm actually thinking really seriously about taking the iron to this and steaming it. Um, I often find, especially in the winter, that works really, really well for um, hand knit sweaters that I don't, they're not, it's not gonna change shape that much by, by wet blocking it. Um, I more just want to get it steamed, like get it set into place. And ironing and steaming can do that same thing without actually getting the garment soaking wet when it's really, really difficult to get it dry. So I'm gonna keep you posted and I'm gonna keep thinking about it and I will make a decision probably this afternoon at some point. 
because I have about half an hour of me time where I'm going to work on some stuff for the podcast and uh, work on some of the Patreon stuff. And it gives me a chance to sort of reflect on what I want to do. And chances are I'll probably take the iron to this and uh, steam it and see what I think after I steam it. If I do steam it and I still don't like what it's like, I'll leave it for a bit. I will probably rip it out and if I don't like it, and I will reskein the yarn and then I will wash it and I will wet wash it. I'll put it into like wet water uh, with some eucalyn and then I will hang it to dry and whenever it's dry, it's dry, I'll put it over a vent somewhere. Um, because I find after you've steam finished yarn, you really have to um, rewash it to get all the kink out of it. So that's the only thing. Um, I, I, I don't really like to steam finish yarn and sweaters unless I know for sure that I'm not going to rip them out. So, um, yeah, I know one of my friends, my friend Jess, she knit this. It looks amazing on her. She has a different shape from me though. Um, so I do think that that makes a big difference. She actually put a clasp here at the front, uh, to hold it closed and it looks really awesome. And I have thought a little bit about doing that myself. Um, because it's just a natural shape for the sweater to take and for the poncho to take and I think it actually um, finishes it quite nicely and so I have thought a little bit about maybe doing that myself. So that is the Veronica sweater, Veronica Cardi by Shannon Cook and uh, I'll let you guys know what I decide to do about um, the washing and blocking and whether it loosens it up enough that it changes the fit just a little bit to uh, be a bit more ideal on me.